Hey everybody, welcome back to our Learn Tinker course. In this video, I just want to explain and show you what the label widget is used for in Tinker. We'll begin this video by talking about what labels are and how they can be used in Tinker. Then we'll go through how you can add them to your GUI. Just as a quick note, if you're new to Tinker, just click the prompt in the top right corner of your screen now, or visit the description below for our whole Learn Tinker playlist. So what is a label widget in Tinker? If you remember from our Tinker Fundamentals video, we talked about what widgets are. Well, a label is just another widget that we can place within our graphical user interface. It allows us to display either text or images to our user. So, as you can imagine, this is going to be incredibly useful for us moving forward. Anytime you need to tell your user something, well, you will be using a label. If you want to display an image, label. So let's go through and talk about how we can use the labels widget within our GUI. Let's begin with the syntax of labels first, before we actually get into coding one. We begin creating a label like any other Tinker widget. We give the widget we are creating a variable name. Then we are going to tell Tinker that we want this variable to be a label widget. Then we need to tell Tinker in which GUI window we want to use the label widget in. So for us, this is just called main. Then we use a comma and we can either use text and or an image. If we put text, we can just either put a number or a string directly, or assign a variable and then place the variable name there. That is really all that is required. However, you can also use the options portion here to further customize your newly created Tinker label. But we'll come back to that shortly. So let's just test this out. Let's enter the line of code that we were just working through. And run the Python file and see what happens. Just note that we also actually need to tell Tinker to place our newly created widget in our GUI. And we do that using pack like so. Then running our file, you can see that we are greeted with hello, meaning that our label widget actually worked. Now let's try an image. Before placing our image into our Tinker GUI, we actually need to first make the photo a photo image, which is another widget inside of Tinker that we will talk more in depth about in a future video. For now, let's just find the folder in which we are creating our Tinker GUI. For me, this is called Tinker Tutorial Folder. As you can see, I have just placed an image in this folder. Now, I can create another variable. I'm just going to call it logo as it seems fitting since I'm using the study session logo. Then, as I said earlier, we need to store it as a photo image, which can be done like so. And we can just enter the image's file name as it is already located in the correct folder. However, if you don't want to do that, you just need to place the path to the image here. Then, just like we did in the previous example, we can create a new label widget. However, this time we're going to tell Tinker that we want an image to appear, and then just put the variable name where we created the photo image widget. Now, when running the file, you can see that our image is very, very large. To quickly resolve this, let's just update our logo image to be scaled down using the subsample function. Now, as you can see, when we run the file again, our image is a much more reasonable size. So now that we have the fundamentals of how to create and use a label widget for both text and images in Tinker, let's go through some of the options we can use. This list I am about to go through isn't exhaustive for all the options you have in Tinker labels. You can also do a quick Google search for a more in-depth list. This is more just to show you some of the things that you can do with your label widget and how you can go about implementing the options that you want. Firstly, what if we want our label to have a black background with a white foreground text? Well, to do this, we head back up to our text label variable definition that we created earlier. Then, as we talked about earlier, we add a comma here to enable our options. Then, we just use keywords to tell Tinker which of the options that we want to enable. So, we said we wanted a black background. This is enabled to the options keyword BG, and we can either enter just black here as our color, 
or use the hexadecimal number for black. So if you want a specific color, you should use the hexadecimal number. But for all simple colors, you can just enter the name. So let's just put BG equals black. Then when printing this, we can see that we are presented with a black box. This is because our text color is also still black. So let's take a second now and change that to white. This is done through the option called FG or foreground. Just like we added the background option, let's do this for our foreground text and change it to white. And I'm just going to enter the hex number here as hashtag 6S, as this is a hexadecimal number for white, just so you can see how that works as well. Now, when running our program, you can see that we are presented with a black background and white text, which is just what we wanted. So other things that we could do here is add padding to the top and sides of our text box. So to do this, all we need to do is add either or both pad X and pad Y to our options. Then we just need to tell Tinker how many pixels we want to pad our text or image label by. When I run this, you can see that we have now padded our text box significantly in both the X and Y direction. Another cool thing you can actually do here with the label widget is change the text font style and size. So let's say that we wanted to change our hello text here to be in the font of Times New Roman and of size 30. Well, then we just need to add in the font option in our text label widget definition. So let's just enter font equals and then in parentheses, the font name we want and then the size of the text we are trying to create. So as you can see here, when I run this, our text is now in Times New Roman and is of size 30. Like I said earlier, there are plenty more options you can do with label widgets inside of Tinker, particularly through the options that we have just been playing around with. I hope this video gave you a solid introduction though, and taught you all the fundamentals you need to begin playing with label widgets in Tinker. Thank you for checking out this video and I hope it helped your understanding of how we can use and customize label widgets within Tinker. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and consider checking out our YouTube memberships down below or our Patreon page to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.